Yo, 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 what is up, y'all? It's Cone back here again tonight with another episode of After the Buzzer, the show where I recap the NBA games from the night. Two games to go ahead and get into. One was maybe the best game of the playoffs up to this point. At worst, it was top three, which is saying a lot because we've had a lot of really, really good games. The other one, total blowout. We'll talk about that one for a bit at the end, but we're going to mo mainly focus on and start with Bucks versus Celtics, which was an incredible game. Celtics up big pretty early in this one, even in the fourth quarter, up by double digits. The Bucks making a big comeback to bring it really close towards the end. And at the end, it was like the craziest sequence of clutch plays I've seen in so long from all the stars on both ends. Uh, I do want to give a quick shout to Jalen Brown, who went crazy in the second and third quarters of this one to give the Celtics that big lead. Uh, Jason Tatum had a great game. Giannis 40-11-3. Holiday 24 8 and 8, and he's really the guy that I want to give a lot of credit to in this one because in the first half, like Drew Holiday was not doing that much, he was inefficient, he wasn't being very aggressive, and without Chris Middleton, they desperately need a second scoring option. And for them to win this game, they needed Drew to step up. And I'm sitting there thinking, like, why isn't Drew doing more? They need him, they need him to be more consistent, they need him to hit and take shots. And then it was like he heard me talking my own head because all of a sudden in the second half and especially the fourth quarter, he completely turned up and he made clutch play after clutch play. Uh, I had to go back and like I watched the end and it all happened so fast that I forgot about many of the things that happened. So I wrote them down here on my computer on a Google Doc just to make sure I don't forget anything. And even then there is a chance that I forgot something. But first off, Al Horford uh, throws down a putback dunk to make it a six point game with about like 150 or so left then Giannis earlier in like another possession he got elbowed in the head and at the start of this possession he starts bleeding from his eye because of Pat Connaughton and then he hits a clutch three to make it 102 to 105 with a minute 40 left um, no one scored for like a whole minute it was just a bunch of bricks back and forth then Drew hit a three with 42 seconds left to tie it up 105 to 105 Jason Tatum goes down to the other end gets fouled hits a couple of free throws to make it 107 to 105 uh, then Giannis goes back to the other end and gets fouled on another shot attempt he hits one but misses the second but Jalen Brown and Marcus Smart like both went for the ball at the same time you have, if you've ever played pickup and like you've went for a board while your teammate did and it goes out of bounds it was kind of one of those scenarios but instead of going out of bounds it landed perfectly in Bobby Portis's lap he puts it right back up and in giving the Bucks the lead 108 to 107 and then we get to the part where Drew Holiday went crazy full um and I took that personally mode with Michael Jordan for not getting a defensive player that year nod at some point. He even said in his postgame conference that um, when they asked him about his clutch plays on Marcus Smart and the rest of the Celtics in this game defensively, he said, um, to me, it felt like there were two defensive player of the years out there on the court showing that he believes he should have gotten one of those nods. And the more you watch him, it's pretty clear that at some point, Drew probably should have gotten a defensive player of the year nod. But anyways... Marcus Smart gets the ball off the inbound and Drew Holiday like snatch blocks him like he blocks him catches it and as he's falling out of bounds throws it off of Marcus Smart to gain possession uh, they inbound it to Pat Connaughton he hits both free throws to go up by three when he gets fouled and then the Celtics with no timeouts left get it into Marcus Smart who starts running up the court uh, given he's running like towards like the closer baseline to the camera Jason Tatum is running literally wide open on the upper base or the upper sideline like there's no one there guarding him. Um, I think someone fell down or something like that because he was completely wide open. But Marcus Smart tries to dribble past a couple guys. Drew Holiday strips him, runs it back to the basket, just runs the timeout, and the game's over. The Bucks go up 3-2, winning 110-107. to This was a crazy one. And the way that Drew stepped up big is exactly the way that the Bucks needed him to. It's that championship DNA. It's that like they've been here, done this before. It's really hard to knock off the reigning champion. When they have the best player in the world in Giannis, a defensive player of the year caliber guard, Andrew Holiday, guys that knock down threes, Pat Connaughton and Wesley Matthews were two guys that were critical in this game, uh, Bobby Portis as well, putting up uh, 14 and 15, he was really solid, the Celtics without Robert Williams really missed his rebounding and it showed, like on a possession at the end there, where Bobby Portis gets that offensive board off the Giannis miss free throw, that's a moment where Rob Williams could have gotten that board, so missing him, it was 
was very clear that they miss his interior presence. Um, it was just, it was a really impressive effort from this Bucks team. Um, in addition to Drew, of course, who I've talked about a lot as being a guy who is one of the best defenders in the league, period. The way that he stepped up on not just like one play or even two plays on the defensive side of the ball, but then offensively hitting that clutch three at the end. It was one of the most impressive clutch sequences that I've ever seen. I feel like every time it gets to a clutch moment like that, Drew Holiday makes some crazy defensive play. We saw it in the finals against Devin Booker in, I think it was game five or game, I don't remember, game five or game six, I think it was game five in Phoenix. Um, getting that steal on Devin Booker, then throwing the lob to Giannis to go up 3-2. That moment sticks out like multiple moments in this one. It just feels like Drew always makes those plays, which is exactly what they traded the multiple first round picks for when they got him from the Pelicans. Just cool to see him making those plays. A guy that really deserves a lot more recognition than he gets. Um, even after winning a championship last year, I feel like not enough people recognize Drew Holiday's contributions to that. So shout out to Drew and also Giannis. Like he put up 40, 11 and three on 59% shooting. And it's like hardly being talked about because it's just what Giannis does like every night. Like it just feels like a typical Wednesday for Giannis when he puts up a 40 and 11 game on almost 60% shooting. It doesn't feel weird anymore, which just shows how great he is, how impactful he is, and just the crazy statistical output that he has on a game to game basis where 40 and 11 for a lot of guys, it would be the best night of their career. And for this one, it's like third, fourth, fifth, probably even further down for Giannis. It's just, it feels very pedestrian. It feels like he was getting to his spots. He hit that clutch three that also that I I mentioned while bleeding that is a crazy picture that i'm probably going to use for this thumbnail maybe we'll see so if you did see that that's the picture i'm talking about but just the ability to go and knock down a shot like that have the confidence as a guy that a lot of teams will probably live with that live with him shooting that three especially in a clutch moment when the bucks are struggling to find offense to have the confidence to step up knock that down trust in your jumper that you've worked on over and over again for hours on hours Impressive, just impressive stuff. Uh, shout out to Mike Boonholzer, who had a pretty good coaching game in general. It felt like he made some good adjustments in the second half. They went with kind of this three guard lineup for a lot with Giannis at the center. You had um, Drew, Pat Connaughton, and Wesley Matthews out there with uh, Giannis. It was it was impressive. So shout out to uh, Coach Mike Boonholzer, who did a pretty good job in this one. Um, yeah, just shout out to the Bucks Going up 3-2 now, it's going to be tough for the Celtics to pull this one out, winning two, but they've done really tough things over the course of this season. It's a really talented squad. I wouldn't be surprised if they do pull it out. We'll see. It's going to be a really fun couple of games. I'm sad this series is going to end in seven, probably, maybe six, but I'm sad there's only a possible possibility of being seven games because I've loved this series. I don't know what it is about this Milwaukee Bucks team that always, they just seem to have really fun series in the second round, the conference finals, the finals. It just kind of seems what they do. So I'm hoping to see more Bucks series in the future. They're a lot of fun. Um, also shout out to Jason Tatum. He was pretty good. Just wasn't enough tonight. Uh, moving on from that game, like I said, the second one was not fun. Um, the Golden State Warriors going up against the Memphis Grizzlies. No John Morant, of course. Um, coming into this one in the uh, pregame interviews, uh, they asked Steph Curry what the game plan is or what they want to do tonight to the Memphis Grizzlies, and he replied, whoop that trick. And so, you know, all of me saying all of that probably makes you think, oh, the Warriors ended the series. They won by like 25. Uh, no, the Grizzlies went up by over 50 in this one and ended up winning by, uh, if I can do some quick math, 39 points. So no, um, they did not. Uh, it was a complete slaughter. Like even in the first quarter, they were up by 10 and it kind of had that feeling of like, oh, kind of like last game where the Grizzlies kind of went up big and then the Warriors kind of chipped away. It felt like maybe it'll be one of those games. And then at the end of the first half, they're down 27 and you're like, what the hell is happening? At the end of the third, they're down by like 42 and you're like, oh my God, what the hell is happening? It was wild. It was a ridiculous game. Uh, the Grizzlies just destroying the Warriors. It looked like the Warriors like forgot they had a game that day. Like they had been sleeping all day and then they kind of just woke up like 15 minutes before and uh, Steve Kerr, who is in COVID protocols, called them up and was like, hey guys, by the way, you have a game. And then they like all just walked to the court right then, no warmups or anything. Like they were dead. There was no energy. It felt like they were just kind of expecting to walk into Memphis and be like, 
oh, no John Morant, we're kind of just going to take this one. But shout out to the Grizzlies because they put them on their ass in this one. Uh, 21 8 from Jaron Jackson Jr., 7 and 13 from Stephen Adams, 21 from Desmond Bain, 21 3 and 9 from Tyus Jones, who, in my opinion, deserves a starting job somewhere. He is really good. He's too good to be a backup point guard. Uh, 10 4 and 2 from DeAnthony Melton, 11 from Zyra Williams, 9 from Kyle Anderson, 9 from John Conchar, 11 and 7 from Brandon Clark. They had like five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 guys play in this game. If that shows you how much of a blowout it was, it was ridiculous. And no, the Grizzlies are not better without John Morant. I guarantee you there are going to be some of you that have already commented on this video that they are. They are not. I promise you. To me, this kind of just felt like a case of the Grizzlies knowing they don't have John Morant feeling like, okay, we got to step up. We're going to play good for him in front of their home crowd. These games happen sometimes. We saw it happen to the Bucks last year against the Brooklyn Nets in the second round where I think they lost by like 40, 30 some, um, like their biggest, maybe even 50. It was like their biggest playoff loss in franchise history. And they went on to not only win that series, but the finals. So I don't think this says a lot about the Warriors or that the Grizzlies are a better team without John Morant and that they're going to come out, knock off the Warriors down 3-1. I don't think it happens. It is a little concerning if you're a Warriors fan because of it just kind of seemed like they were just not really interested tonight. That definitely has to be like a little concerning or at least just annoying that they came into it and they really didn't look ready to play. But I don't think it means anything big for their championship hopes. I still think the Warriors are going to close this one out next game back home. Um, not in the Oracle. It's the Chase Center now. I I miss the Oracle. Oracle is way better. Um, but they're going to close it out there. A uh, couple shouts for the Warriors, though. Clay Thompson was really solid in the only 25 minutes he played. He had 19 points. He was really hooping in the first quarter, and then it kind of just got away. Uh, Kuminga had 17 points in 24 minutes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that was kind of about it. Um, other than that, like Steph had 14, but like it's Steph, like that's nothing crazy. Yeah, so Grizzlies win 134-95. to uh, I don't think this says a lot about the Warriors. I don't think it says a lot about the Grizzlies. I think it was kind of just a weird game that took place in a different dimension that somehow we were able to watch on TNT. So those are my thoughts on the games tonight. Uh, let me know what your big takeaways were in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what y'all have to say as usual. But for right now, I appreciate y'all watching. Leave a like and subscribe. If you made it to this point in the video, drop a... Um, Drew is a defensive player of the year to show, you know, that shout to Drew Holiday. Maybe he'll get one at some point in his career. But for right now, I will see you all later. Real one, say it back.